back at 614 now in the primary just five days away. New Yorkers head to the polls September 14th. And one of the races that's getting a whole lot of local and national attention is for the 15th Congressional District. And that's where several Democrats are challenging the incumbent Charlie Rangel yeah, for his, his seat in Congress. Yeah, his name is Jonathan Tassini. He's running against Rangel. He's a former union leader, spent 13 years as a union president, and he's the author of books, three books, including The Audacity of Greed. Sir, good morning. A, a lot of people would say, okay, everyone's jumping on the bandwagon to challenge Charlie Rangel, but he says, look, I've been there for decades and I will still be able to deliver more than you or the other opponents. This isn't about delivering, you know, seniority does have some benefits, but it's also about Charlie Rangel being the number four recipient of lobbyist money in the entire House of uh, entire Congress, Republicans and Democrats. He is part of the corruption in Congress, part of the corrupt system, not necessarily personally, but by taking money from uh, big corporations, defense contractors, he has essentially sold out the people of the 15th Congressional District. But in your work as having been a union leader, your union has certainly given money to members of Congress. So, you know, what's the problem? I don't see those things as the same thing. I know that Why not? because they're not the same special interest. I see a big difference on labor unions, which I'm proud to be a member of, supporting. So they're good, but corporations or other lobbyists are bad? That's Is that right. what you're saying? I would say that people who are lobbying and trying to press for better wages for health and safety, I'm proud to say that are doing for the people for millions of people whereas many of the corporations are lobbying for large CEO pay packages which I think have been detrimental to America so I see those as very very different but what about the people of Harlem who say you know what we've had a champion you could criticize him and he's gonna have his day in court very soon in congressional court so to speak but this guy has been bringing home the bacon is that hard to argue with well the first thing is this district is not just in Harlem although I respect the fact that Harlem has a great tradition in, in our our country and in this city it's in Washington Heights where I've lived for 23 years as a renter uh, in, in the Upper West Side and actually I've been out in the streets every single day that's where I'm gonna go after this show out in the subways and people are fed up with Congressman Rangel they want something new they ask or can you get me a job the most heartbreaking thing that you see when you go to these subways when you're in the streets are how many people say can you find me a job because of the crisis in America that is the thing that I keep hearing in the streets not whether some guy from a political machine is doing well for someone all right well what would you do differently then to try to provide jobs? Well, the first thing is I'm pro I, I'm the only one in this race that's arguing for an increase in the minimum wage to $10 an hour. Mm -hmm. I believe that we have to increase Social Security by 15%, not cut it. I believe in something called full employment, something that no Democrat or Republican talks about. But all those things that you're proposing are going to cost the country a whole lot of money, drive a, up a larger deficit, and increasing the minimum wage, whether you support it or not, small businesses do in fact say that that will cause them to cut jobs. Well, let's on the minimum wage almost every uh, uh, credible study shows that there's very little impact uh, when you raise the minimum wage the real question we have to ask is what is our vision and version of the American dream can anybody survive and make the American dream on first of all the minimum wage which is poverty level wages and wages that have been flat for 30 years if you believe in the American dream and I think that that's a bipartisan across the political spectrum no uh, idea you have to provide people enough money to buy and to survive. And we are in a, a place now where people don't have wages, where they're maxed out on their credit card, there is no home equity. If we don't help the people first, forget the tax cuts, forget this nonsense about just helping businesses, we have to help the people. So it sounds like you're not thrilled necessarily with what President Obama said yesterday because a lot of what he said yesterday was trying to give breaks to small businesses, trying to get employment going. You sound like you want to go perhaps further to the left of that. Well, I don't know if this is a left or right issue. I'm about trying to stand up for the people of the 15th Congressional District and hopefully be a voice for the whole nation. The first question we have to ask is how do we help the people? How do we put money in people's pockets? Over the last 30 years, wages have been flat and people have been working harder than ever. It's immoral in the United States of America, which is the richest nation we've ever seen on the planet, for people to be uh, not making it. For one in four children to be on food stamps, we should be stunned and just upset and unwilling to put up with that notion. One in four children on food stamps. We have the richest divide between rich and poor in a hundred years. That is not the United States of America. Can you win this? Absolutely. Even with a divided opposition to Charlie Rangel, say what you want, but the bottom line is he's got the money and you've got people who are, the vote's going to be split amongst the opposition. I think you raise a good point. Look, he has a enormous amount of money from lobbyists from all sorts of interest that I think hurt the 15th Congressional District, the residents of 15th Congressional District. I got in late to the race in May. Money is a very important factor. Here's the, the 
equalizing factor. Smallest con this is the smallest congressional district by geography in the entire country. So I can walk every block and touch enough voters to win. That's what I do every single morning. That's what I'm going to be doing today. This so morning. would you not take money from lobbyists? Nope, don't take a single... And what about from I, unions? I'm union proud lobbyists. to take money from... You'll take money from union lobbyists, absolutely. but not any other kind of lobbyists. Proud to do that. Okay. I won't take Some money... Some might call that being a hypocrite. It's not a hypocrite. Yeah. I, no, I see a very big difference between people who are union members, union lobbyists, lobbying for the good of the people versus corporate lobbyists. That's right. a big, big difference. Okay, Jonathan right. Tassini, thanks a lot. We're going to have to leave thanks it there. He's a, a congressional it. candidate thanks running for against me. Charlie um, uh, Charlie Rangel in the primary, which takes place next week. And Congressman Rangel will be here in about an hour or so right on Good Day New York, so you want to tune in, that for, tune in for that also. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. We'll see you.